Coming to you live once again from Young and Dundas Square, Saturday, May the 28th, 2011. Once again, uh, citizens of Toronto are uh, uniting to have a rally to demand a full public inquiry for the G20 uh, summit, which occurred here last year. We are uh, a few weeks away from the one year anniversary of the travesty which occurred here. Largest uh, violation of civil rights in Canada's history, largest uh, mass arrests, almost a thousand people arrested without rule of law for doing absolutely nothing wrong other than uh, exercising their democratic right to freedom of speech and freedom of assembly uh, while protesting at the G20 in the designated free speech zone, many of them. The political scene uh, has changed in Canada. Uh, beginning of May, Prime Minister Harper of the Conservative government has uh, won himself a majority government. And uh, we know that it was Prime Minister Harper's uh, decision to have the G20 in downtown Toronto, which negatively impacted many businesses here, as well as the citizens uh, who were arrested and brutalized by the police. Thank you. Lisa. 
officer. The contact receipt will be a carbon copy that would state the reason and nature for the interaction as well as the name, rank, division, and badge number of the officer. So what it helps with is them looking at the idea that police still need a different kind of training, a different type of knowledge in the interaction with the diverse city. So you understand what I'm saying? The reason that I ask this is that it's actually legislated in their charter rights project. They already said that they're going to do this. All we need to do is put a lock Mercury's feet to the fire and strike a match. It's that easy. Doggy bag to go with that. <laughs> it was an illegal act that was imposed on the city of Toronto called the Ontario Public Works Act. It was a 1939 law used as a justification to arrest innocent Canadians. So what we do is we get to the truth. The G20 will not go away. We will not let it go away. We are not going to stop speaking until investigations occur, until 11 police officers tell us how Dorian Martin was attacked, why his arm was broken, why he got a black eye. Young and Dundas Square, uh, Toronto Truth Seekers are here, handing out information. 
they did have a table here, but the police came and uh, told them to take it down because they don't have a permit. They've been here several weeks before without a permit, have never been hassled, but today it became an issue. Support Toronto Truth Seekers if you're down at Young Dundas Square. Come on over. They've got free DVDs and flyers with information that's crucial for you to know. How are you? Good, yeah, yourself? Could be better. Well, we don't have the table, but we made up for it anyway. Yeah, I, I was across the street. I saw the police come over and tell you to take it down. They yeah. said you need a permit. Yeah, yeah. I saw you guys here last week. Did you have a permit last week? No. Nobody hassled you last week? Nobody asked last week. They had wheels on it. It's crazy. Does a permit cost money? It sure does. Good way to generate taxes. And so much for freedom of speech. Yeah, exactly. But there were other people witnessing, uh, witnessing what was going on, so they were getting uh, kind of pissed off about it. So Yeah, I saw one of the guys from Press for Truth here filming it, so I'm glad uh, yeah. I didn't get here quick enough with my camera, but I'm glad he caught it. Oh, for sure. Are you getting good response from the public? No, so far, so good, yeah. So, well, you get people that, that don't believe that 9-11 was an inside job, but that, it's up to them. Okay. You Absolutely. Can't force them to do it. No, but more people are waking up to the truth as more lies are exposed in our society. Every day. Every day. It's the ugly truth here. And uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, G20 protests have sort of merged uh, with the Toronto Truth Seekers here. Toronto Truth Seekers uh, expose a variety of topics, whether it be vaccination, fluoridation in our water, of course, 9-11 uh, being a fiasco and a fraud. And some might wonder, what does the G20 have to do with that? Well, the New World Order, which is uh, planning a one-world government, one-world religion, they are in charge of the G20 governments, and they are heading in a certain direction. And their uh, whole plan is for domination and control. And through deception and lies, you know, we are controlled every day. The G20 was used to condition us, to get us used to, as they always do incrementally, get us used to uh, being in a police state and being subservient, being serfs, taking away our freedoms. 9-11 was the big excuse, you know, they created a boogeyman of Osama bin Laden and Muslim terrorists who supposedly attacked the World Trade Center. Uh, to justify illegal wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And on top of that, they use that to create fear. It's a false flag terror attack. Uh, it's known as the Hegelian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution. The government creates the problem, they wait for the reaction, and then they propose the solution. By creating false Muslim terrorists as a threat, Americans who would normally stand up for their civil liberties and rights uh, willfully gave up their rights to things like the Patriot Act, which we are now seeing is not being used for against Muslim terrorists at all, but against people who stand up for their freedoms and civil liberties in the United States and now in Canada as well with the G20. And this happens everywhere. Everywhere the G20 goes, the Miami model is used. It's a script, the exact same tactics to, to bring fear and intimidation into the public and to shut down dissent. Yeah! All right.